right, I am going to press A to select everything, then X and press delete. With Shift A, I will add a reference image and here select the one I provided in the description or you can go with another one if you want. If this is done, I will bring up the side panel with the N key, then I will reset all the rotation values for the image, then I'm going to press R, X and 90 to rotate it on the X axis. Let's move the reference image out of the way and then try to center it to the 3D cursor in the side view so we can start modeling our sword. Hit Shift A and add in a new plane and then rotate it as well on the X axis. I am going to use the X-ray view a lot, which you can find here at the upper right corner. Now let's start creating the blade first. Tab into edit mode and since this model is symmetrical, I will add a loop to the middle with Ctrl R and then I will delete the left side of the plane. I will immediately add a symmetry modifier from the modifier panel, but for that you have to tab out from edit mode. Make sure to also enable the clipping option. Back in edit mode, I will start moving around the vertices to form the blade's basic shape. We don't have to fit so tightly as we are creating a stylized sword. Grab all the outer edges and then move them back slightly to give it some thickness. Let's add another loop cut for this detail, then slide this vertex down by pressing G twice like this. Then I am going to flatten this area. Let's select everything, then move them in front of the origin point so we can add another mirror axis on the blade. Now I will select all the outer edges once more, then extrude them with E to close the gap. Now let's apply the mirror modifier, because we don't need it anymore. Instead I will add a subdivision modifier with Ctrl 3 press right click and shade it smooth. Now I will start adding some sharp edges to the blade by selecting this edge loop with Alt and left click, then Ctrl P to bevel it. As you can see we already cut this nice edge around the blade. Let's add another loop cut to sharpen out the bottom area as well and for the central area select this edge loop and use a small bevel on it. Moving on the next part of the sword, I added a new plane to the scene. Let's rotate it, scale it and move it down slightly. Don't forget to apply the scale with Ctrl A. Then in edit mode, let's add the loop cut in the middle because we are going to use a mirror modifier as well, so delete the left face of this part. Let's enable clipping and select the blade as mirror object. Back in edit mode, let's start moving around vertices and extruding edges while I try to follow the shape of the cross guard. If you are done, select all the outer edges and extrude them to fill the gap. Let's drop a subdivision surface modifier on this as well, shade it smooth and we will also need a bevel modifier to give some sharp edges to the mesh. Let's move it under the mirror modifier. I will change the limit method to weight, so only the edges will get beveled, which I set its weight to 1. Let's select these two edge loops. On the side panel, I will increase the mean bevel weight to 1. Now the amount of bevel is too much, so let's decrease it a little bit. The next part is the grip. 
which will be a little bit harder than the previous part, but don't worry. This time I will add a cylinder with 28 segments. Let's scale it up in the z-axis, Control a and apply the scale. Now I will add 5 loop cuts and here you can play with the smoothness to get this rounded almost like a barrel shape. Now let's select this exact edge and press Shift D to duplicate it. Press P and separate it as selection. Now we have a different object which is a piece of edge at the moment. Let's select it and add a screw modifier. You can increase the screw value and the iteration to model the grip all the way up. Next I will add a shrink wrap modifier, then select the cylinder as target. With that done, let's apply both of these modifiers. Let's go into edit mode, select the bottom loop of edges, then press S to scale them out. Shade it smooth, then add a solidify with even thickness, then give it some volume. After that, continue with the bevel and sub D modifiers. If necessary, you can scale everything out to cover the cylinder. To close the gap between the cross card and the grip, I will add two cylinders with 12 segments. Nothing special here, just don't forget to apply the scale. The only modeling to do here is to insert the top and bottom faces twice, then merge both the center faces in the middle with M. To sharpen up the edges, I added a subdivision modifier, then beveled these two edge loops. Let's create a copy of this ring with Alt D and also make it a bit smaller. Let's duplicate it once more and delete the bottom half of this object. Now let's delete the subdivision modifier for a moment, duplicate this edge loop with Shift D, move it down, press P and separate as selection so we can get a new ring of this edge. Then I'm going to set its origin point to the center. Let's rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees, then I am going to move it accordingly to the blueprint, but it's ok if it's not 100% correct. Now let's add a mirror modifier to this ring and select one of the parts of the sword as mirroring object. Add some thickness by moving it to the side and apply the modifier. After this I am going to join these two parts by pressing Ctrl and J. Let's tap into edit mode, select the two rings, then search for bridge edge loops in the edge menu. This will create a nice cylinder for us in the middle. Now select all these faces, press E to extrude, but press right click immediately after extruding and use Alt and S instead to move out the faces along their normals. Let's add in a loop cut to the middle and I'm going to delete these top faces. With proportion editing mode enabled, I will scale out these two edges on the Y axis and also make sure that the connected only option is checked. You can make the affection radius bigger or smaller with the mouse wheel. Our next job is to fill up this gap, so select these two edges and press F, then F again a few more times to finish all around. Then I will add a subdivision modifier and some sharp edges by beveling some loops. With the modeling part is finished, we can disable the reference image in the outliner as we don't need it anymore. I am going to change this timeline window to the shader editor, then switch over to render view, then I'm going to select cycles as rendering engine and my GPU as device. Now let's set up our scene for the rendering. Select everything and slightly rotate them in one direction, then press Alt and D to rotate them in the other way, forming this cross with the two swords. You can also move it in front of the other, so they don't intersect each other. Ok, let's set up the camera. Shift A, add in a new camera to the scene 
and if you press Ctrl Alt and Numpad 0, the camera will automatically jump to your current view. On the side panel, check the camera to viewport option, so now you can move the camera more easily around the scene like you would looking around normally. Let's set up a nice resolution for our scene. I will go with 1080 by 1350 pixels. By the way, this nicely fits with Instagram. For local length, I choose 75 mm. If you found a nice view for the camera, you can disable the camera to view option on the side panel. Let's add in a plane and scale it up like this. This will be our background, so it have to fill in all the area in front of the camera. Let's apply the scale, then grab this edge, bevel it with Ctrl B, give some segments with the mouse wheel, then shade smooth. It will give us a nice transition. Back in rendered view, I change the pivot point to the 3D cursor. This will help us move the surrounding lights a bit easier. Speaking of lights, let's add in a new area light. Move and scale it up like this. Then in the light settings, I will increase the power to around 2000. I will start creating the first material for the blade. So click on new material and rename it to blade. Let's change the metalness all the way to one. With Shift A, I will search for an image texture node, then open the grunge map I provided in the description. Once that done, select the image texture, then press Ctrl plus T, which will add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. If it's not working for you, you have to enable the node wrangler add-on in the preferences, then try again. I am also going to add a color ramp, so we can modify the roughness map a little bit more. Let's swap the UV information to generated and the projection to box. Now let's press shift Control left click on the color ramp to preview this node. You can use these two sliders to dispart the black and white areas on the grunge map, but I am going to leave it as it is. I will only make the black color to a light gray color. Let's see how it's look by shift Control clicking on the BSDF node. I think it looks pretty ok. Let's work on the lights a little bit. If you press R two times, you can rotate anything freely and try to find an angle where the blades reflects back the light to the camera. I will give this light a little bit of color, then I will duplicate it with Shift D and free rotate it to emit light from the back. So we can get this kind of a rim light. We can also increase the strength and use some different color. I want to duplicate another area light to make a fill light. This can be very subtle. We only need this to brighten up this front area. Moving on to the sword, select the next part, then add the blade material to it, then duplicate it to a new one and rename it to gold. Then simply choose a goldish color. I also want to add this gold material to some other parts, so select these parts, then the cross guard, hit Ctrl L and select link materials. For the leather straps I simply add a new material with a dark brown color and high roughness. I also made a new material for the background with a dark blue color and also high roughness. Let's add in a new point light with 500 strength and move it back close to the background and behind the sword. From here you can play with the lights, colors, angles and all sort of that, whatever you see look good. In the rendering settings I recommend to use the medium high contrast because it just gives you a bit more depth to the scene. Alright, let's render out our scene and then we will add some glowing effect in the compositing tab. So let's click on the use node option then press shift A and search for a glare node. 
you can choose all kinds of glowing effects, but I will go with the foggy glow option with high preset and the size of 6. I think this is it for this tutorial. I hope you got a nice render for yourself. And if you have any questions or opinions about this video, use the comment section below. Thank you and see you guys next time.